Hey, this is me building a $3 million per year business in public. I do these videos the same every single day. And the reason why is because I want to offer some consistency, but also because I think it's the most optimized way for me to grow this channel while also helping deliver you guys value. How that works is I start with some YouTube comment Q&A. That's where you guys ask me questions about the AI agency model or really anything freaking else. Then I answer those. Once I'm done with them, I build and strategize in public, which is me just walking you through what I'm currently doing in my business today to drive disproportionate outcomes. And then finally, we cover growth stats across my YouTube, Instagram, and my product. I have a number of products, one of which makes about $300,000 a month, another that makes $35,000 a month. I'll walk you guys through that at the very end. If this is my uh, main channel, if you guys have yet to hear of me, I run one at 170, almost 8K subs. This is the daily updates channel over here. It's where you guys are currently watching. And when I say I do some Q&A, all I do is I go to the community tab and scroll all the way down as quickly as humanly possible. The reason why I do this is just to show you guys some you know, crazy social proof. Obviously, I'm sort of in demand. A lot of people asking me questions, a lot of people commenting on this channel. Uh, and it's also just a little time, little hack. I just yap on while I scroll this through. You guys get hooked on it because you guys see real questions that people are asking me uh, that I am answering. So it looks like we're about 12 or maybe 13 days out. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and answer the last one from Lesla. And then uh, just in terms of how long we're going to do the QA for, it's going to be about 12 minutes today. So, hey, Nick, fellow Bulgarian here. I went through some of your demos and I was mesmerized. I'm not sure I have the technical background for this though. Does one need upfront technical skills or can all be learned from scratch with the resources in the community? If the former, I would consider doing something like drop services where I'd get leads and close while having someone fulfill in the back end. Even in this model, I'd need a really good understanding of the technical stuff. I appreciate your advice. So I want to stop you right there, fellow Bulgarian. The main value in this business model is not that you sell this thing and then you have somebody else deliver it. The main value in this business model is because no code tools significantly reduce the barrier required to be able to fulfill a technical project, you can actually learn both in a very short period of time. You can learn the sales skills and you can learn the technical implementation skills and combine them together to be a very dangerous operator in the market. You can then use your fledgling technical skills to optimize your own processes to grow your business, whether you are solo or very lean. So the idea is not to do some sort of drop services model. That is not the value. That's not the alpha. You could have done drop services at any point in time over the last 30 or 40 years and realistically done more or less the exact same business model. What this is, is this is a new model that leverages the significantly more uh, 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 e economical way of building systems through no-code tools like make.com, NADN, and so on and so forth to deliver disproportionate outcomes. So I would not recommend that you do this. Instead, I'd recommend that you go through and you learn the technical skills, whatever technical skills there really are. You can get the 80-20 of make.com, NADN, or any other one of these drag and drop no-code tools in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks is not a very large barrier to a new business model, as I'm sure you can understand. Okay, Illusic says, hey Nick, what are your thoughts on the use of Claude and NADN MCP to create workflows in minutes? Do you think it'll kill learning NADN the standard way by building workflows from scratch and do you personally use it? I think it will eventually kill NADN, not kill NADN the tool, but kill building NADN workflows or make.com workflows from scratch, absolutely. It will significantly reduce that technical barrier even further and make it so that you don't actually have to know various things like uh, data structures or inputs or outputs or how to loop things and so on and so forth. Do I use it myself? No, I don't. Because in my case, it is still much faster for me to drag and drop the modules than it is for me to have AI create some fantastical thing in a way that I would never personally build it and then have to debug and maintain it um, aside from that. So. My leverage is already good enough that I don't really need to do that, but I can absolutely see this having lots of value over the course of the next year or so uh, for people that don't have that technical background, that don't have that, you know, uh, systems experience. Thank you very much, SLM. Mr. San Gotenks, fellow DBZ fan, says first or second high. The Mystery Power says a quick question. When you mention hopping on a discovery call or closing call with clients, do you mean regular calling or video calls? What do you do more? I almost entirely do video calls at this point simply because video is higher bandwidth information. And so it's easier for people to see the sort of person that I am when they get to see my face and how I move and so on and so forth. Generally, human beings like more bandwidth and communication versus less. And, you know, it's one of my skills. So I want to press that button wherever possible possible. Thanks for helping, says Anbu. Parakala says W. Sakshi says, drop everything you're doing right now and find the book inside the Matrix fault. Okay, that is some bullshit. I'm going to hide you from my channel. Thank you. Nice vid, man, says Nitu. Arshit says, uh, YouTube, YouTube. W Sonic says, if a client pays me to build a custom automation, 
Do they own it outright if they stop working with me, or should the contract specify terms? In general, I give away every system that I build, and I put it in the contract that the intellectual property is my client's. But we should be very clear here. What is intellectual property in drag-and-drop no-code tools? I'm not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice, to be clear. However, all these things are, really, is a combination of AWS Lambda API calls. API calls to some AWS Lambda backend. And so you having intellectual property, or you calling your intellectual property this chain together AWS backend API call thing, is not at all very rigorous, I would say, legally speaking. And so I don't really consider this a downside at all, because it's not like I built this fantastic, super amazing product, and I'm giving it away to my clients every time, and that's costing me some massive opportunity. Uh, realistically, it's just a bunch of AWS API calls that are strung together. It doesn't matter how complex a system is either. Uh, you know, you could, I think, and I have never been pressed on this, and again, I'm not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice. But I think you could go as far as just changing a couple of the parameters or fields in a module. And realistically, that would no longer be the same system and you would be fine. So just give it all to your clients, man. Who cares? Intellectual property, for the most part, I believe, is not going to make it out of the 2020s. I do not know how to pronounce that, but it's a, it's a Greek. Hey, Nick, I started building automations thinking of choosing a niche of timber and construction because my father's already in the industry and has connections. What do you think about this? Should I choose another niche? Keep in mind, I live in Greece while well, I figured what with the name and all. Uh, do I think this is a great niche? No, but do I think that you having a leg up with your father being in construction would help you penetrate this niche? Yes, for sure. I would struggle to see how I, my systems would really be able to improve a timber construction business realistically. I don't know. Are you on the manufacturing side? Like, are you on the uh, raw resource extraction side? I, I don't really know how that would help too much. Maybe something to do with like managing work, you know, timetables and stuff like that. I'll stop before I embarrass myself. I have zero experience in that industry. Christian A. Build says, hey there, Nick, your videos are amazing. I watch them every day before I go to school. I was wondering, what do you recommend do? I'm 17. I'm doing with two partners who are also 17. We have three 17-year-olds combined. That's 51 years of experience. I have a warm lead in a company that's pretty big, valued at around $100 million. And they usually need to have an ABN, Australian Business Number, and Public Liability Insurance. I've just started out my agency. Do you recommend I register as a sole trader until I lock the client in? And then I can change it to a PTYLTD? Or should I just do that from the start as it'll be more formal and professional? to them. Okay, to be clear, I don't know what any of this means because I'm not an expert in Australian business law. In Canada, you are a sole proprietor uh, if you just choose to be, for the most part, and you can sell up to $30,000 worth of stuff, Canadian dollars, mind you, so that's a very low bar, before you're legally registered, uh, legally required to register a business number and stuff. So I don't I don't exactly know what like the legal stuff is here. I'll just comment uh, on generalities, and the generality is you know, if you are a 17 year old and you have a warm lead of a hundred million dollar business, they're, they're probably not expecting all too much, all, you know, already. Um, this is a fair amount of work, time and energy that you put up front. It's also probably a cost that you would have to, you know, pay and justify for out of pocket. I don't know if I would do all of this work. Realistically, that sounds like kind of a pain in the ass. I don't know if I would. I mean, I was 17 years old. What, like, is this guaranteed? Do you have a contract in your hands that is like, hey, you know, let's work together and I'll pay you 10 grand a month. Um, you know, just enter your insurance information here. You know, if not, no, I, I don't know if I'd really do that. And just because a company is pretty big valued at around $100 million does so not necessarily mean that you're talking to the decision maker at that $100 million company, right? You're just saying warm lead. And just, you know, if it's not the decision maker at a $100 million company, it's not like you are going to make up $100 million from working with this guy. This could be like a, a $500 project here or there. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is, to be clear, I would make sure that you're in a position where you will absolutely get this contract as a 17-year-old who probably doesn't have much in the way of runway, who probably doesn't have much in the way of experience or skills in this industry, I'd make sure that you have something in writing saying that you're going to do the work if X, Y, and Z thing is fulfilled. I'd make sure you know how much money you're going to make from it. And then I think you'll be in a much better position to justify an investment into an Australian business number, public liability insurance, and so on and so forth. The way that I always see this stuff, again, I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. <laughs> Maybe I should become a lawyer because I'm getting so many damn legal questions. That'd be fun. Um, the way that I always see it is the downside risk of a fine and the total cost of said fine will probably be significantly smaller than the opportunity cost of me not going ahead now. Because what is the downside risk of a fine or a percentage of my tax revenue? Or something? Like it's usually like 50 bucks at the numbers that we're talking about here. It's not a lot of money. I would much rather just get going today because me getting going today would significantly improve the probability of me being able to close a $10,000 deal in the next like, month or something, which would make whatever tax or whatever liability I have inconsequential. 
Okay, how do we fulfill client work? Do we send them a template and a guide on how to fulfill it? No, my recommendation for you is you actually get on a kickoff call with the client. Once you're on the kickoff call with the client, you walk them through signing up to all these platforms that you need in order to fulfill the project. Then you get them to give you their username, password, and all the credentials. Do two-factor authentication live on the call if necessary. Log in, verify that you're logged in, and then you don't have to send any templates or anything. You just do the work directly on the client account. There's no handoff. There's no bullshit. You just get 100% um, you know, of the project up on their account. Okay. Rodrigo says, I can't recommend you enough to get a personal trainer to get you a diet and reach your daily calorie goal. Really life-changing. I can DM you a really good one. LOL. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. I want to apply my health consistency into business. Almost seeing traction. Wish me luck. I'm wishing you luck. Are you still in Calgary or have you moved out? I live here too. Would love to say hi. Hit the gym together. Hey, perfect chasers. For sure. I'm still in Calgary. That sounds fun. Send me an email. You're looking at a blog post and started drawing on the screen. Mind blown. How do you do that tech and software? This over here is called Presentify. It's a Mac app that lets me do this. There's a variety of Windows alternatives. Uh, it costs 10 bucks. Then I have a tablet called an XP pen, which I spent, I think, like 50 Canadian dollars on or something with this little pen here, which is basically broken. Unfortunately, I'm probably gonna have to get a new one. Um, and then it just basically functions as a mouse on my screen. So when I press on it, I'm kind of clicking and then I just drag it around my screen. It's cool. Hey, Nick, I'm an accountant building a billable web app for an accountant I contract with. That's cool. He's thinking of the app as his property, and I think it might work for other service-based companies. Should I finish it and leave it for him only or try to structure a deal or partnership? That's pretty cool. Depends. How much money are you making with this? Are you... Uh, I'm signing a really chunky big deal. If it's like, you know, a couple thousand dollars or something like that, probably not that big of a deal. And you can do whatever the heck you want with that probability of there being an issue. I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice is quite low. Um, however, if it is like a big deal and uh, maybe they're reputable or have some renown or have some, some big distribution or something like that, um, then maybe I wouldn't. Uh, so yeah, I guess my answer to TLDR is it depends. It depends for sure. You can absolutely start selling it. And then you could see if you get some sort of traction. And then when you get some sort of traction, you can actually answer this for yourself in a much more privileged, powerful position than you are now. Uh, you don't even know if you know this is something other people want. You think it's something people want, but best to know, right? Filter yourself out at the end, not the beginning. It's Staffy says, Nick, I've seen you emphasize Loom videos a lot. I compiled a SaaS where the user can just give a website and the system will find a competitor. Then it makes a comparison competitor report as well as a custom Loom video. It screen records the client's website and competitor's website, like price page, landing page, etc. Then voiceovers as well as avatars of the user. Compiles it all just like the Loom video. It takes around two minutes. If possible, that you can invite me to your channel or video to show you a demo of it so people can get help. This sounds pretty cool. I don't want this to be an advertising channel, of course. I mean, I think the fact that I've just walked people through what a solution like this would look like is sort of advertising enough. Uh, I do appreciate this, and I think that value does, I think that solution does have value. I built something very similar for this myself um, back when I was gunning up, uh, you know, platform-based sales and then doing like some cold DMs and stuff like that. And I found that that worked pretty well. And there are a variety of other solutions in the market that do do this. So that's pretty cool. Maybe, you know, if I were you, I would have dropped some way for people to get in touch with you. That way, uh, you know, when the several thousand people see this video, they would have been able to. Uh, you know, at least like double check what you're doing, uh, which would have been cool. CFO Mod says, thank you stealing for all this. And then it looks like you have dropped the exact same comment on a bunch of videos. So unfortunately I have to remove all of this. It's taffy, no hard feelings. All right. All right. All right. All right. It's been 12 minutes now and I'm a man of my word. So we're moving on. Let's do some building and strategizing in public, shall we? Got a kickoff call with a major client coming up in 10 minutes. So I'm going to have to get off the call pretty quick. That's going to be fun. I've uh, been hitting the gym really consistency consistently for the better part of the last couple of weeks, uh, well, I guess five weeks now or something, whenever the hell I initially made my statement and I'm up to 177 pounds from like 170, which is sick. So, I mean, I'm up seven pounds. Most of that's water weight. I should be clear. I took a bunch of creatine and stuff and you know, very little of that's actual muscle, but yeah, I'm filling, I'm filling out. I'm filling out. I'm getting thick man with two C's. That's pretty fun. I uh, wanted my health to be, you know, my health was a big goal of mine over the course of the last uh, few months. And I'm glad that, uh, yeah, I've made it a thing. Also, my shoulder, for those of you guys that are keeping track, um, I previously had this thing called brachial neuritis, very uncommon condition that basically just paralyzes your, uh, your shoulder muscles, and I could not move my hand above around here. Well, guess what? First time in my life I've been able to do this in like a year. I am doing this entirely of my own will and power. It is incredible. So that's pretty great. Uh, in terms of building the businesses, I got a couple things I got to do today. So we got that ad campaign kickoff call, which is going to be sweet. Um, we're going to start with some YouTube retargeting ads. This is probably the lowest hanging fruit that I've found so far. I'm running an annual campaign on Maker School, and so you guys can get a 50% discount on the annual plan, which takes it from a total cost of over 1800 US to $1,104 per year for joining. Uh, if you head over to Maker School and sign up as a new 
entrant. If you guys are already pre-existing entrants in Maker School and you want that $1,104 a year price, you want to lock that in, then what you need to do is you need to cancel your subscription and then rejoin. And uh, because school is just kind of funky sometimes, it doesn't allow you to upgrade your current plan if you signed up on an older plan. This is a new plan, the $1,104 per year one. Uh, you have to you have to do this kind of work around. But yeah, if you guys want that and you guys are in Maker School, send me a DM. If you're not, then now would be the time to join. It's going to expire in a couple of days. Um, and it's great because, you know, I've managed to take a bunch of revenue that I would have made in the future. And despite the fact that I'm taking a haircut on the total amount, I've moved it to today. And one thing that you guys should know in corporate finance and, uh, you know, just like investing in general is that the present value of money is always significantly more than the future value of money due to interest rates, a little mathematical thing. But basically if I collect a thousand dollars today and the interest rate is 10% a year, then realistically that thousand dollars today is worth $1,100 in a year. Okay. So it's a, it's a quick little hack, but basically you should be willing to take a haircut. You should be willing to take a, like a little pay cut on whatever product if you can lock people in today. And so the difference for me is not, you know, 1100 versus 1800. It's actually like 1100 versus some amortized multiplied by weighted average, uh, probably like 1600 or something like that. So that's pretty cool. And that's why a lot of people push annual myself included. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just really excited to get a bunch of people in here. Uh, the people that are generally joining from annual tend to be significantly higher engaging as well, which is obviously something that I want. And so the significant improve improvement in engagement has, uh, yeah, it's been great for the community. We've seen engagement numbers go up. So that's cool. That's what I'm doing on that front. What else am I doing with my life? Uh, yeah, I got an agency hot seat later today. I'm pretty stoked about, um, hmm. I'm going to Japan next month. Did I tell you guys that that's going to be pretty fun. Don't know exactly how I'm going to juggle work and then being in a completely different time zone, especially with the agency growing. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, we're doing some standardization of things like the kickoff calls and whatnot, uh, which up until now we've been sort of all over the place. I haven't really been very good at training, unfortunately, but I think this is going to significantly improve the uh, user experience by the kickoff call. And then, uh, what else are we doing? Yeah. And then, you know, I've taken a, a pause on the content on the main channel, as I think you guys know, and it's reflected on the stats quite a bit. I think I'm just about to the point where I'm going to stop the pause and uh, actually start doing more content on the main. But I'm realizing that I'm just going to do some brand stats while I'm talking. I'm realizing that like, as you grow on YouTube and Instagram and all these various things, you do eventually reach some limit or some saturation point in your audience. And so what you typically start doing is then you start joining other people's audiences and doing things like podcasts and whatnot. So I'm probably going to do a pretty big podcast circuit. Um, you know, I'm obviously going to continue posting content on the main channel, but, uh, yeah, if you've ever wondered why, like Alex Ramosi, for instance, does all these podcasts and all these other places, or I don't know, these, the big guys that you follow for the most part, big guys or girls, they, they go and then they talk about their businesses on other people's uh, podcasts. And, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, there are a couple of reasons. One is like the repurposability of the content and you in different environments being interviewed by different people is obviously big for your perceived social value. But two, the, um, you know, the audiences that you tend to reach from there are fantastic. You just get way more surface area in other people's audiences. And then because the person that is interviewing you tends to edify you, um, a lot of that positive reputational uh, stuff transfers over, which is great. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be really fun. Uh, and I don't exactly know what the podcast circuit's going to look like, but I had somebody invite me out to Bali a little while ago. Um, somebody invited me out to uh, Las Vegas a little while ago. I was invited to Florida in a very big info product guy's mansion, who maybe some of you guys may know. I was invited to do like a, a call, like a, like a live call sort of podcast with another really, really big name. Um, and up until now, I've just always been like, eh, no, I think I'm going to make more money just talking about my own stuff. And I don't really want to like, you know, drip away my positive reputation to people if they don't necessarily keep up with, with the, my, my, my quality and, and delivery. And authenticity, but you know, now I think it actually starts making sense for me to, to go out there and do it. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Thank you guys very much for watching as per usual. I'm going to go do some packaging and jump on this freaking kickoff call. Cheers.